trolling, 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 Two hundred nine kilometers away from the city of Winnipeg is Kenora, a small town located in northern Ontario. It has a population size of an estimated fourteen thousand nine hundred and sixty seven people. The name Kenora has an interesting story, as it was once three separate towns. Kewaiton, Norman, and Rat Portage, the culmination of the three names being Kenora. Although this small town may not have many residents, it has lots of foot traffic from travelers as it is located between the Lake of the Woods and the Winnipeg River. Both of these bodies of water are prime for summer cabins, cottages, and fishing shacks, which is where Rainer Island fits in. To explain the history of Rainer Island, we took a day out to go to the old Rainer homestead, where it all began. You can get anything you want at Alice's Restaurant. You can get anything you want at Alice's Restaurant. Walk right in, it's around the back, just a half a mile from the railroad track. And you can get anything you want at Alice's Restaurant. Parked in the bay, outside the uh, old Rainer homestead, where Grandma and Grandpa Rainer came to Canada uh, to a plot of land uh, in 1906. And uh, the field behind us here is, was where Grandpa cleared the land. They built a log cabin. They had a couple cows and, and, uh, and a big, uh, big garden. And they lived on this piece of land up until 1922. 1922 there was construction in Kenora when they were building the, the paper mill. So Grandma and Grandpa, Auntie Winnie, and my dad Norman, um, Gordon's great-grandfather, all moved to town. And uh, we moved to a house up on Main Street North in the right out. But this was the original site of, of the Rainer homestead. And uh, it's pretty tough times then because uh, no outboard motors. Uh, you basically had a rowboat and you rowed to town. So while they were growing up on the river and actually after they had left the homestead, Grampy used to spend a lot of time on the river uh, cutting, cutting pulp wood for the, for the new paper mill in Kenora. And they had an old gator barge and they used to camp on a little island. It had a little sand beach, a big rocky shore, and a nice flat spot to put up a couple tents. So they used to stay there. And uh, while they were staying there and cutting wood and doing other, other things, fishing and hunting, they decided to build a log cabin there. And so sometime in the, the late 40s, early 50s, a log cabin was built at the site of our current camp. And so that's uh, that's the story of, of Grandpa Rainer in the Winnipeg River. But he spent most of his life here, and uh, and even up until the end, he was still wanting to go to camp, just like the rest of us love to go to camp. When my baby moved out and the blue moved in, there wasn't nothing I could do. But mosey around with my head in my hand, Lord, what am I coming to? I just keep moaning, moaning the blue. This is Camp, the cabin on Rainer Island. It is located 4.5 kilometers up north from central Kenora. There are two main structures at Camp, the main cabin along with the bunkie in the back near the forest. The interior of camp is a culmination of furniture, decor, and knickknacks from the generations previous passed on to the next, left to decorate this beautiful cabin. 
From a filmmaking perspective, the lighting isn't great, but it's slim pickings when there's no electricity, no plumbing, and very, very slow cell service. But hey, that's camp. The best part about camp has got to be the fishing. It's truly a staple of the Winnipeg River experience, and after the bureaucratic nightmare to get a fishing license is a breath of fresh air from civilization out on the water. It's Bobby Bass. <laughs> Yesterday we, we caught his sister Brenda Bass. We found out later they're all a bunch of bastards. <laughs> Say goodbye. However, our day out on the waters was rudely interrupted by MNR officers. Okay, here we are fishing on the Winnipeg River right next to the island and we got pulled over by the MNR. The day begins. We're under a storm watch for tornadoes. But we know we need to have some fish for dinner. So off we go enjoying a beautiful but breezy afternoon in the distance we see this boat approaching they're coming at us quite aggressively in my opinion causing some small wakes as they pull up beside one gentleman stands up and i see him slowly tucking his vest slightly back exposing his weapon saying so what do we have going on here are you fishing without licenses who wanted to see everybody's IDs and licenses. And unfortunately, Karen's license had expired. Of course, my hand started to tremble just a little bit, feeling slightly nervous and set off by his aggressive tones. <sighs> yes, yes, of course, we all have our licenses. We scramble <laughs> to pull them out of our wallets. I feel confident because I'd seen the 2023 on my license, feeling good about the situation. Where did you buy your bait? Do you have a receipt? We've never been asked that before. So you live here, so the bait you have would be construed as being from here. Because they don't live here, they're concerned over bait they may bring in. So I handed over my license with confidence to this gentleman, still standing, puffing his chest, revealing his weapon. And I'm confident that it's okay. But in fact, it had expired. I needed a new this year license, but I was under the impression that my license was fine. Instantly, the entire situation got tense. He was like, I need your license, your home of address, and I'm going to write you a ticket. What if I get my license right now? Is there any way out of this? I'm trying to hold back my emotions, trying to stop myself from getting too aggravated from the situation. And he says, you'll have to do this on your own time and email it to me later. I said, no, no, let's do it now. Let's just stay right here, right now, until this is done. Okay, I'm just gonna write this down, and you can email me. Oh no, I, we're here right now. Well, I don't have all day. Well, I don't know, well, we're here. We've checked well, life jackets. Well, we don't have all day either if we have to go to town to get a license. Yeah. <laughs> that we thought right? was good. He, he's giving you a break right yeah. now. Okay. Yeah. They managed to stay. I whipped up the interweb. Thank goodness for 4G bars, and I was able to log on, pay my $55 for my new license. That's, that's your new license, and then you want to print it out if you want to carry a hard copy. Okay. But then, the interrogation continued. Where did you get your bait? Do you have a receipt? How many life jackets do you have? We have six people in the boat. Unfortunately, we only had five. But it's okay. I have some very intelligent family members who managed to count one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. And somehow we managed to convince these water bullies that we were in good shape. So here we are. We're fishing. We're catching fish. We're all legal. And we hope very dearly that our other boat is doing okay. Thanks, guys. Take care. Yeah. So, we had escaped from the tight fist of the law, 
which called for celebration that night, and with the amount of fish we had caught, a proper celebratory fish fry was in order. The best. Some guy we insist. Some guy insisted. Oh, what, we could probably get a perch, piece of perch in there. Yeah, yeah. there you go. That'll fit. Aww. Look, there we go. All right. There it is. That's the fish frying. Right there. This is the whiskey. Important part of the fish. Keep moving, moving, moving. Though they're disapproving, we'll find out where the school and all I My heart's got a plate, a big fish that's awaiting, waiting at the end of my life. I'm trying to understand them. Miss Richardson, this this is a B minus best. Oh come on! 